Come with me, toy fans. When I made the Story of Action Man documentary back in 2012, I had the amazing opportunity to discuss this beloved British toy line with many key personalities from the Palatoy company. Personalities such as Bob Breakin, chief designer on Action Man who also sculpted his gripping hand. Brian Turner, a Palatoy display manager who also designed such wonderful toys as the police motorcycle. Dave Barnacle, a freelance graphic artist who penned some of the most iconic Action Man packaging artwork of all time and Roger Morrison, the Palatoy tooling manager, who explained the reasons for the development of the Action Man dynamic physique. However, there was another very influential designer who I never got the opportunity to speak with, and that man was Greg Hughes, who joined Palatoy in 1978, and had a hand in designing many of the Action Man figures that I grew up with, including the Action Man Space Rangers, which were the topic of this channel's first ever YouTube live stream. So shout out to, to Greg Hughes, I, I doubt Hughes watching this, so I'd love it if he was. Well, it turns out Greg was watching, and a number of weeks ago, I woke up on a Saturday morning to an email from the man himself. And in that email, Greg mentioned that he'd like to send me something, and the parcel recently arrived. Oh, oh my God. And this is... I'm really so, oh, my commentary is terrible today. I'm so taken aback. Also included in the parcel were several copies of Greg's conceptual artwork for the Action Man product range. And after receiving that parcel, Greg and I have exchanged numerous emails. And today I am very proud to present to you this video feature where we will discuss the many talents of Greg Hughes and detail his contribution to the greatest British toy line ever produced. Hello Action Man fans, my name is Tony and welcome to a very special Analog Toys special feature, the Action Man designs of Greg Hughes. In 1978, Greg Hughes applied through a job advertisement for a position as a toy designer with the famous British toy company Palatoy, which led to him being interviewed firstly by Bill Pugh, Palatoy's Director of Design Research and Development, and then by Bob Breakin, the Chief Designer of the Action Man line. And following these two successful interviews, Greg was offered the position and soon began working in the Palatoy design department. Before I proceed any further with this video, I must state at Greg's request that all information hereafter is as Greg remembers it and comments are made without prejudice. You need to understand from Greg's point of view that these things happened almost 40 years ago and I can't even remember what I had for dinner last night. From the beginning, Greg was heavily involved with Action Man's military uniforms from the US paratrooper onward and this outfit is significant since it was the first outfit to introduce a webbing accessory manufactured from vinyl, and Greg helped to develop this idea. The introduction of vinyl webbing not only increased the play value and accuracy of the range, but also came with the added benefit of being more cost effective, since the earlier sewn pouches were more expensive to produce. And I think the vinyl webbing accessories for Action Man were a real leap forward in terms of design. With my personal favourite being the webbing from the Long Range Desert Group set, which incorporates a removable dagger and sheath, a water bottle, and even a two-piece entrenching tool. This is today's Action Man, watching the armoured jeep getting ready for action. Talking commander gives his orders. Give me some cover. The assault copter fires off its rockets in support, right on target. But is the battle over? Only you know. You and Action Man. But beyond this, Greg will always be remembered for his design work on the Action Man Space Ranger series. In 1977, the movie Star Wars was released in cinemas, and the film revolutionised the pop culture landscape, and the accompanying toy line, which was produced by Kenner in the United States, became wildly popular and radically changed the face of the boys' action figure market. Star Wars fever had hit, and in order to compete with this globally popular brand, Every boys toy manufacturer in the world went on the hunt for their own space fantasy concept. The galactic powerhouse that was Star Wars was threatening the retail profitability of Action Man, and although Palatoy was producing their own Star Wars figures under license, the company also wanted to keep their flagship brand alive in toy shops, so Palatoy responded to this threat with Greg Hughes' development of the Space Ranger concept. This range began with the Action Man Space Ranger Captain, which was sold as a boxed figure and the Action Man Space Ranger Patroller, which was sold as a carded outfit. These first two sets featured a rubber all-in-one suit with integral feet, a bit like a baby grow. 
Greg had the best of intentions with these products, and you can see that in these images for his original resin sculpts. But unfortunately, the company trialled a new manufacturing method, which didn't come off as planned. The eventual Space Ranger suits never ended up looking like anything Greg or the rest of the design team had intended. So Palatoy quickly changed them to a fabric outfit with separate boots and gloves. Greg feels, and these are his words, that Palatoy took an unfortunate track to a poor idea. But despite these design drawbacks, the Palatoy Space Rangers still sold quite well, so the company decided to further expand the toy line. Bob Breakin speaks very highly of Greg's conceptual work, because prior to the Space Ranger line, all Palatoy was doing was taking existing military uniforms and the like, and shrinking them down to action man size. Greg was developing entirely new ideas for the product range, and this creativity led to some of the most unique action man figures and outfits ever produced by Palatoy. In my opinion, Greg's greatest creation was Captain Zargon, a space pirate and enemy of the Space Rangers. Captain Zargon had the standard Action Man dynamic physique body, but moulded in black, with circuit boards printed on the chest and thighs. In the gift box that Greg sent me, he also included two resin castings, which represent a couple of the original sculpting ideas for Captain Zargon's head. And these pieces give a fascinating insight into the design process at Palatoy. This casting is Greg's first design for Captain Zargon's head. And note the teeth, which Palatoy thought would be too scary for children, so Greg was asked to model a mask across Captain Zargon's mouth. This casting is taken from the original master model of Captain Zargon's head. The casting is slightly larger than the production version due to shrinkage parameters, and cast in polyurethane resin. Currently, the first resin example and the production mould for Captain Zargon's head are held in the archive room of the v &A Museum of Childhood in Bethnal Green. Also noteworthy is that early production examples of Captain Zargon show him as being equipped with a red visor, but the eventual product featured a green visor. Captain Zargon is dressed in a cape with boots and gauntlets, and is armed with a laser sword, and you better beware his stingray eyes. Captain Zargon and the Space Rangers were a real departure from anything that had come before in the Action Man range, and I think they were a welcome change, and they look absolutely tremendous when displayed. Palatoy also offered children a Zargonite pirate outfit to fit the standard Action Man figure, and the outfit is shown here next to Greg Hugh's original concept art, which is just incredible. Another design innovation on the Space Rangers came courtesy of both Greg Hughes and Brian Turner, and this was the heat welded version of the Space Ranger tabards. Greg and Brian came across a company that could manufacture these tabards, which were basically a sandwich of PVC, foam and PVC, which was heat welded to create the relief effect. This tabard was used for the Talking Space Ranger Commander and other outfits, and this time around the tabard incorporated a holster, something that Greg feels was an oversight by him on the first Space Ranger Captain figure. To fill out the Space Ranger line, Palatoy offered children a number of different vehicles, which were all adapted from existing toy designs. These included the now very rare Planetary Patrol vehicle, which was adapted from the Action Man Power Hog. The Solar Hurricane, which was adapted from Kenner's $6 million man toy named the Bionic Mission Vehicle. And finally the Space Speeder, which was adapted from Hasbro's G.I. Joe Sea Sled. And this product was wonderfully realised by Brian Turner, who Greg says is a real hero of Palatoy. While Greg may not have designed these vehicles, he did draw many of the leaflets for these larger products, including the one for the Electronic Command Centre. The Action Man Electronic Command Center. Who knows its secret location? Why are its guns firing? Who is the talking commander calling? Did the Space Ranger and the Solar Hurricane pick up any signal? Where is the Space Knight Rom? The Command Center. Talking Commander. Solar Hurricane. Rom. What strange force will bring them together? Only you know the answer. You and... Action Man. Rom Palatoy. Greg's other great claim to Action Man fame is his concept design for the Action Man special team. Greg presented a series of conceptual drawings at Palatoy's new products meeting, and these drawings depicted his idea of what military outfits might look like 20 years into the future. The first special team outfits were released in 1982, and included the ground assault, underwater assault, and arctic assault sets. These outfits also featured the first purpose printed camouflage patterns used for Action Man clothing. Greg produced the artwork for these patterns which were based on British DP patterns. He also notes that this should have been used for 1982's British infantry outfit, as opposed to the standard Action Man camouflage pattern, which Greg refers to as the Duck Hunter style, 
that had been around since the late 1960s. Greg left Palatoy in the early 1980s, but before his departure, he created a series of conceptual drawings for the Action Man special team. This drawing shows Greg's proposal for a special team jungle fighter outfit with various webbing items and possibly an adapted Uzi submachine gun. But sadly, this outfit never made it into the range, and that's a real shame, because I would have loved this when I was a child. Greg also created conceptual drawings for proposed special team vehicles. The reconnaissance vehicle on the left would have used the cab from the Action Man multi-terrain vehicle, and is shown here being commanded by a ground assault figure. The swamp craft shown on the right would have been adapted from Hasbro's existing G.I. Joe Devil of the Deep set, and Greg notes that this vehicle would be ideal for jungle warfare and would have likely been paired with the proposed special team jungle fighter outfit. Being an existing product that would simply be recoloured, Greg believes this would have been a fantastic addition to the range, and I wholeheartedly agree with him. This final special team concept drawing from Greg Hughes is his proposal for a larger weapons utility vehicle, which would also be adapted from the multi-terrain vehicle, with the addition of tracks taken from the Iron Knight tank. These never-before-seen concept drawings are evidence of Greg Hughes' immense talent. Even Bob Breakin said, and I quote, Greg was far and above the most creative designer we had at Palatoy, and we were very lucky to have him at that time. After Greg left Palatoy, he continued to create conceptual drawings for the company whilst working as a freelance artist, such as this concept drawing for the Space Ranger Commando, an outfit eventually realised in toy form. You'll notice that Greg's drawing uses the same colour pattern for the outfit as the Space Ranger Talking Commander. However, Bob Breakin deviated from this design and in Greg's opinion bettered it when he developed the Space Ranger Commando, the last product ever developed for the Space Rangers and one of the last new outfits ever produced for the Action Man range. Greg also created conceptual drawings for some of the later SAS outfits and these are far and away my personal favourites of all the drawings that Greg sent me. This first drawing depicts what would eventually become the SAS Parachute Attack set, with the final packaging artwork being completed by Dave Barnacle. Greg notes that the camouflage parachute in his drawing would have been great, and I'm inclined to agree with him, as opposed to the all-black parachute that was included with the final product. The second SAS drawing from Greg Hughes illustrates the concept for an SAS Frogman, a set that would end up being named the SAS Underwater Attack. Once again, the artwork is just incredible, even if Greg does laugh at the fact that Action Man's dynamite sticks would get waterlogged and be rendered useless. The next of Greg's drawings were created for market research purposes, and would eventually become the last Action Man outfit ever produced. Seen here is Greg's conceptual drawing for the Special Team Missile Assault set, and he intended for this to be a Special Team Enemy Infantryman. Once again, Bob Breakin realised the eventual toy design, and you'll notice that the colours used for the camouflage on the final product are vastly different to the ones used in Greg's drawing. Not only is the missile assault now remembered as the last Action Man outfit ever produced, but it is also recognised as one of the rarest sets to find today, and I am extremely proud to own a boxed example of this set, the significance of which is further bolstered by the fact that mine came from Bob Breakin's personal collection, and it will forever remain one of the most treasured pieces in my entire Action Man collection. The final drawing that I'm going to show you illustrates a conceptual design for an Action Man accessory, the type of which I always dreamed of when I was a child. Seen here is Greg's proposal for an Action Man scaled M16 with grenade launcher, which is connected by a wire to a battery powered backpack that would be used to illuminate a flashing light in the barrel of the grenade launcher. But what really intrigues me about this drawing is the webbing set, since this was something I actually tried to recreate when I was a child. I used to take the 58 pattern webbing from the late issue parachute regiment outfit and fill the pouches with all sorts of small accessories. In later life I even made a custom Falklands War era SAS action man and packed his webbing with as much ordnance as possible. And this was the real genius of Greg Hughes. He understood what children wanted, the key to which was always the accessories. Greg had a fantastic grasp of both military concepts and the essence of what it was about Action Man that appealed to children so much. An abundance of accessories that were logically selected for each outfit, giving Action Man a real life functionality, something that had been featured in the line before, but never with the same level of inventiveness as what was brought to the design table by Greg Hughes. According to Bob Breakin, when he was developing the Action Force range and following the creation of Baron Ironblood, Greg even drew the design for the now-famous Red Shadows Skull and Crossbones logo. 
And that's not the only thing Bob has to say about Greg Hughes. Hi Tony, I'm chuffed you're making this special video so that collectors will realise that Greg Hughes had such an important role in the development of Action Man. I joined Palitoy in 1967, the year after the launch of Action Man, and immediately went on to start changing what was, to all intents and purposes, G.I. Joe in Palitoy packaging, into what eventually became a British icon. The inspired name Action Man allowed us to try something different in those early years, sports outfits, the go-kart, and we delved into adventure and exploration, the mountaineer and the sledge and dog team. But at the same time we were introducing well-known British military uniforms and replacing American designed vehicles with the British Land Rover and Scorpion tank. Throughout this period, up to when Star Wars toys were launched in 1978, we were essentially copying existing stuff. Star Wars changed all that. Kids wanted all things space and fantasy. Although Action Man had been awarded a 10-year gold award the year before, he had finally found his match. It must have been soon after the launch of Star Wars when Greg joined the design team because he produced the US paratrooper with the injection moulded webbing which was in introduced in 1979 at the same time as the Space Rangers. It was Greg who conceived the Space Rangers to satisfy the need for Action Man to ride the Star Wars fantasy bandwagon. His concept artwork was brilliant which he then translated into prototypes for Toy Fair and then 3D resin tooling aids for production. Marketing wanted a baddie for the Space Rangers. Greg conceived Captain Zargon and completed all the development work to get him into production. Soon after that, in 1981, Greg came to the conclusion that we had run the course with copying well-known historical and contemporary military uniforms and presented us with some concept drawings of the special team, the military as it might have been in 30 years time. Marketing embraced this idea. It also fitted in with the need for Action Man to follow this fantasy route. Greg was a brilliant designer with terrific ideas and skills in both 2D and 3D. And although I wasn't able to rise to his standards, when he left Palitoy, um, it must have been around 1982 after he developed the Zargonite. I had learned much from him and later followed his styling to, to develop the Space Ranger Commando and the Special Team Missile Assault. Greg was part of the de Palitoy design team for a short period, but his legacy on the range was immense. Shh, but don't tell him I told you so. In all of my communications with Greg Hughes, he has always insisted that everything Palatoy developed for the Action Man range was a team effort and credit should be afforded to every single member of the design department. And just like every other Palatoy employee that I've ever spoken to, Greg states that his years with the company were the best of any full-time employment he experienced and really set him up for his later years as a freelancer. I really wish that Palatoy's Action Man would have lasted far beyond his demise in 1984 because I would have loved to have played with some of the toys that Greg would have helped create. In my humble opinion, this man is a toy genius with immeasurable talent and his collaboration with the Palatoy design department was a match made in heaven. I spoke very recently with Bob Breakin, who told me that he and Brian Turner had actually kind of lost touch with Greg over the last few years, so I forwarded them his email address. And as much as I want this video to stand as a long-lasting tribute to a man who had such a huge influence over my childhood and the childhoods of countless other people like me, if the only thing that comes from this video is that I somehow assist Greg Hughes, Bob Breakin and Brian Turner in reconnecting, then it's all been truly worth it. These guys are toy legends and I want to sincerely thank them for their positive contribution to our collective childhood.